Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today topic is secondary or rechargeable batteries. This is the seventh video in electrochemistry. You can follow my previous videos on electrochemistry in my channel. The link is provided in the description. And just recall the previous important terms to understand the present concept. The oxidation always takes place at anode. Oxidation means losing of electrons. Reduction takes place at cathode. Reduction means gaining of electrons. Electrochemical cell mean which produces electricity by performing redox reaction, spontaneous redox reaction. And electrolytic cell means which consumes electricity to performing a redox reaction. And secondary battery means the battery which act as electrochemical cell as well as electrolytic cell. So that means during discharging process, that means discharging means battery discharging means the, it's producing electricity. So producing electricity means it act as electrochemical cell during charging process when we put the charging for our mobile phone. So we are giving electricity to the battery that means charging process it act as electrolytic cell. That means these are rechargeable batteries. So lead acid, lead storage or lead, lead oxide battery and also it is called lead accumulate battery. Okay, this is the example for the secondary battery. We all know about these batteries uh, in inverters and ca car batteries is many times we watch these batteries. So these batteries are example for reversible batteries, secondary batteries. These are called lead acid battery, lead storage battery or lead accumulate battery or lead, lead oxide battery. Here, so as usual, battery contains electrodes and electrolytes electrodes are two types anode and cathode so what is anode here what is cathode here what act as electrolyte here first of all we have to know those things here lead plates but not only one plate number of lead plates act as anodes so lead plates act as anode anode mean negative terminal in electrochemical cell okay and lead oxide pbo2 act as cathode it is give the positive sign in electrochemical cell and h2 diluted or diluted h2so4 act as electrolyte so lead act as anode lead oxide act as cathode h2so4 act as electrolyte the next construction of electrochemical cell so lead acid cell how it construct so here if you see here white plates is called white white plates is denoted by the anodes these are the platinum plates so here not only one platinum place there is a three platinum plates is there so white plates the three are connected seriously so and make it as a one terminal as negative end this is the negative end anode and black plates this is the black plates these black plates connected each other and make it as a one terminal so that is called cathode so these three terminals these three uh, plates lead oxide plates are called cathode and this is the negative terminal and these anodes and cathode are immersed in the immersed in the h2so4 solution these are immersed in the h2so4 solution this h2so4 solution is a electrolyte and i already told redox reaction at a place not at a, at a at a time but not at a place so to avoid the direct contact between the anode and cathode in between the anode and cathode insulators or glass or rubber some insulator metals keep here by that we can avoid the direct contact or direct passage of electron from the anode to cathode if there is a direct movement between the anode cathode it produces heat energy instead of electrical energy that's why we need to keep insulators between the anode and cathode plates okay so through anode to cathode only external wire only it electricity will passes not direct contact okay so to avoid that we need to keep insulators in between the plates so see here, so this lead, lead acid battery can act as electrochemical cell as well as electrolytic cell. So discharging process, discharging mean battery producing electricity, it producing electricity. So it act as a electrochemical cell. So in charging process, we need to give charging, we need to give electricity to the battery that's why it is a battery that means from our home we are giving charging to the battery it consuming electricity so it is a electrolytic cell so it can 
lead acid battery it can act as both electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell that's why it is rechargeable battery so that means first a and b chemicals are filled in our battery they will converting into a b and they produce electricity okay so a comma b totally consumed and they produces a b now in our battery no a and no b we have only a b okay so now battery is died it will not produce electricity but if you connect battery to electrical board electricity if you pass electricity now a b again converting into a comma b that's mean it is ready to produce electricity that's why you can use many times you can recharge many cycles and the long life batteries are called rechargeable batteries okay so how this lead acid battery works so first of all take it is the lead acid battery construction in simple form so i am not instead of many lead acid lead anodes instead of many lead lead oxide cathodes i just taking one lead anode and one lead oxide and h2so4 is the electrolyte okay so see here our battery filled with lead and lead oxide h2so4 now lead involved in oxidation it slowly converting into lead sulfide okay and lead oxide also slowly converting into lead sulfide and this process h2so4 is converting into h2o and this is a spontaneous reaction it produces electricity so this is the cell reaction during the discharging process that means it producing electricity and lead is going to converting into lead sulfide and lead oxide also going to converting into lead sulfide h2so4 is going to converting into h2so4 so after some time there is no lead in the battery no there is no lead oxide in the battery they are converting into lead sulfides there is no h2so4 also in the battery it is converting into h2o so it, it, it can be represented by the chemical reactions so redox reaction is happening redox reaction means again oxidation and reduction reaction oxidation always takes plus anode what is anode here lead lead rod is anode so lead involved in oxidation so first of all lead taking involved in oxidation reaction so it produces pb plus 2 so that means zero zero state lead is converting into plus 2 state so that mean oxidation reaction is taking place here but this lead plus 2 is immersed in h2so4 immediately lead plus 2 interact with h2so4 producing lead sulfide and produces also 2h plus ions if you combine these two reactions you will get a oxidation reaction so to uh, lead lead plus 2 and lead plus 2 cancel each other pb plus h2so4 pb plus h2so4 gives pb so4 plus 2 hs plus plus 2 electrons this is the oxidation reaction at anode that mean at anode electrons are generated okay and lead converting into lead sulfide and also it produces 2 h plus ions h plus ions are moved to the electrolyte solution already h2so4 having so many h plus ions and 2 h plus ions are added to the electrolyte okay so now this h plus ions are interacted with the lead oxide and also these electrons are moved from anode to cathode okay now lead oxide is accommodated with the h plus ions and electrons now lead oxide interact with the h plus ions and electrons and it producing pb plus 2 see here lead oxide means it has a plus 4 charge plus 4 charge so plus 4 lead is converting into plus 2 lead 4 to 2 is redu reduction that's why it is reduction reaction and also this reaction consuming electrons it accepting electron that's why it is a reduction reaction so it gives this one immediately lead uh, plus 2 again interact with h2so4 forms pbso4 h plus ions if you add these two reactions you will get a reduction reaction pb plus 2 pb plus 2 is cancel each other 2 h plus ions is cancelled by the two times here so if you write combine this reaction pbo2 h2so4 and 4h plus ions minus 2h plus ions gives 2h plus ions and two electrons gives pbso4 and 2h2o so this is the reduction reaction so this is the oxidation reaction here 
this is the reduction reaction here if you combine both reactions so see here what is the common things here two electrons in the left side two electrons in the right side both are cancel each other two electrons two electron two h plus ions on the left side two h plus ions in the right side cancel to each other and here h2so4 in the left side h2so4 in the left side that means two h2so4 s we need to combine these things and left side pbso4 here also one pbso4 left side that's why two pbso4 and lead and lead oxide so combined reaction is lead plus lead oxide plus two h2so4 gives 2PbSO4 plus 2H2O plus energy, energy in the form of electricity. That means the starting materials lead, lead oxide, H2SO4, they are combined, they are converting as a lead sulfide, H2O, and they produce energy in the form of electricity. So, like that, our battery, lead acid battery, producing electricity, but the chemicals present in the battery they are totally converting into another form that means lead lead oxide converting into lead sulfide and h2so4 converting into h2o so after consuming all chemicals battery is died it is unable to produce further electricity to us so that's why we require to recharge the battery so this is the already uh, learned thing this is the red r uh, discharging process if you reverse this reaction that means in our battery presently contains not lead lead sulfide instead of lead it has a lead sulfide instead of h2so4 it produces it has a h2o so this is the present situation of battery after producing total electricity so now when you pass electricity by using battery by using electricity you are using electricity you are passing electricity now lead sulfide again converting into lead this lead sulfide again converting into lead oxide and h2o again converting into h2so4 this is happened by passing electricity by applying energy this is charging process so by consuming electricity we are performing a redox reaction that is called electrolytic reaction so just reverse the reaction 2 pbso4 to h2o plus energy gives lead lead oxide plus h2so4 here energy is consuming during the charging process during discharging process energy is releasing both energies in the form of electricity okay this is the lead oxide battery so like that we can many times we can many times recharge the battery so, so here number of lead plates, number of lead oxide plates is there. That's why it, it can produce 6 to 12 volts energy. So it's, it's producing much amount of energy. Why? Because it's storing large amount of chemicals. That's why it is called storage battery. So used in cars, buses, trucks. It is also used in gas engine ignitions, telephone exchange, power stations. The important application is, for example, we are converting some non-conventional non energies into electricity like solar energy. By using solar panels, we are producing electricity. First of all, that energy is stored in these batteries. Then when we require that energy, we will consume this energy. Why? Because these are chargeable, rechargeable batteries. That's why large amount produced by the solar panels. First, they are, that energy is stored in these batteries. That energy can be consumed whenever we require. That is a very important application of the storage batteries or recharge. And second example for the uh, rechargeable batteries, nickel cadmium battery. It is also called NiCad battery. Here, here cadmium is the anode. Cadmium is the anode. It undergo oxidation. And nickel oxyoxide, nickel oxyoxide act as a cathode. It undergo reduction. And electrolyte is KOH. Okay. So first see the applications of nickel cadmium battery it can supply high current and can be recharged rapidly so it is a very fast battery it can recharge very fastly and it produces high amount of electricity used in calculators digital cameras pages laptops and record recorders flashlights medical devices so so many applications space applications so many applications is there just see Let's see the how nickel cadmium battery works, how it produces electricity, how can we recharge it. 
so if you see the battery cadmium is the anode and nickel oxy oxide is the cathode for the battery okay so when we used the battery cadmium slowly loses electron why because it is an anode it involved an oxidation reaction by interacting with the OH minus ion cadmium interact with the OH minus ion and it producing cadmium hydroxide and it releases two electrons that electrons are moved towards the cathode electrons are moving towards the cathode now here nickel oxy oxide interact with the two electrons it's going to converting into nickel oxy oxide so that means so cadmium converting into cadmium oxide and nickel oxy oxide converting into nickel hydroxide they are in, in produces the electricity electricity is nothing but movement of electrons from one end to another end here anode to cathode electrons are moving because cadmium releasing electrons nickel oxy oxide consuming electrons if you see the reaction oxidation reaction at anode anode is cadmium cadmium by interacting with the two oh minus ions it producing cadmium hydroxide plus two electrons and the two electrons are reached to the nickel oxy oxide it interact with the electrons and produces nickel hydroxide plus two oh minus ions here electrons are releasing oxidation reaction here electrons are consuming so this is the reduction reaction oxidation plus reduction if you add both reactions two electrons to a where producing and consumed so there is nullified the electrons 2OH minus ions and 2OH minus ions also cancel here so if we add the reaction cadmium plus 2 nickel oxy oxide it producing uh, cadmium hydroxide plus nickel hydroxide and producing electricity so the electricity so starting metals cadmium nickel oxy oxide finally converting into cadmium hydroxide nickel oxy hydroxide nickel hydroxide so in our battery present after producing electricity there is no cadmium there is no nickel oxy oxide they are totally converting into they are totally converting into nickel oxy oxide and cadmium hydroxide so this is the battery situation after producing total available current with it okay so now we need to pass electricity we need to pass electricity by using external energy sources that means battery so now we are passing electricity to the uh, lead and nickel cadmium battery so now cadmium hydroxide so just reverse the reaction so we are passing electricity we have cadmium hydroxide so instead of cadmium it's converting into cadmium hydroxide instead of nickel oxy oxide converting into nickel hydroxide we need to pass electricity that means we are charging the battery then again this cadmium and nickel oxy oxide plus water molecule produces here so that's the rechargeable process that means charging process it act as an electrolyte cell it consuming electricity and we are doing a non-spontaneous redox reaction converting into spontaneous reaction that's why nickel oxy hydroxide converting into nickel oxy oxide and cadmium hydroxide converting into cadmium so it is again ready to produce the electricity so this is the uh, example for the secondary battery in next session the important type of battery lithium ion battery it is also example for the secondary batteries only but we are using lithium ion batteries in our daily life in battery in mobiles laptops and also in vehicles also we are using lithium ion batteries that is an important topic i will come with that topic next time and thank you for watching my videos and please subscribe my channel and uh, refer my channel to who are needed thank you for watching once again